Welcome to the messy bench. Trying to organize stuff here actually. I want to get a shelving unit so I can have more space to set things on. That's the problem. I just don't have room for everything. But that is not today's subject. Today I'm going to talk about two stereo chip amps. We have the TDA2824 stereo IC and the TDA7268. We're going to do a comparison, power test, listening test, you know the usual gig here with my videos. I have this one built out already and when I test this one I'll move some of the components over to that one. This is an older chip, the TDA2824. It came out in the late 80s. And one thing about those types of chips, they sure did need a lot of components to make them work, as you see here. This one, you'll see, takes less components when I get to that part of the video. And we'll take a quick gander at the data sheets. Supply voltage down to 3 volts. Schematic diagram. Pinouts. A lot of unused pins on this. The two center pins act as ground and for heat sinking. They actually provide an internal schematic diagram of this. You can see the differential pair there. Current mirror using a diode. Uh, output drivers. Uh, Quasi-comp output stage. Uh, absolute maximum values there and some data sheet parameters and some curves just a basic chip amp meant for battery use you can use it with 9 volts 4 ohms even 12 volts 8 ohms and we'll check the power output at various supply voltages at 4 and 8 ohm loads. And here is the data sheet for the TDA7268. We're calling it a 2x2 two two watt stereo audio amplifier. There's some general information here. Block diagram. Absolute maximum ratings. This one works at higher voltage than the other one. And you notice here the pinouts. A little bit different arrangement. All of these pins on this side are for ground and heat sinking. They also use a heavier lead frame on this IC to get the heat out. Some characteristics. Again, just pause if you want to read through all of that. And application circuit. Requires much less parts than the other one. Okay, the TDA 2824 is all powered up. Let's give it a listening test. And that was Heartful of Soul from the Yardbirds, a 1965 song. Man, what an awesome guitar riff. What a great tune that is. I just love that song. The Yardbirds were a springboard for three very renowned guitarists, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. Later on, when founding members Keith Relf and Jim McCarty left the band, Jimmy Page brought in the members who would form the New Yardbirds, or as we know them now as Led Zeppelin. Like I said in a previous video, I'll do quick music vignettes on groups I think are really great, but I have to keep the music short because it's copyrighted. But to test the amp, I have to move on to YouTube Safe Music.
sounds just fine to my ears. One thing I do notice is with no sound playing, there is some hiss. That's because this has quite a bit of gain and it does amplify hiss from the preamp and its own input stages. But on the other hand, it has plenty of gain for headphone output type music players and such. Okay, let's get a power measurement there. Okay, it's clipping. Tune that out of clipping. 2.15 volts. 2.15 volts RMS. We square that divided by our load impedance of 4 ohms. We're getting 1.15 watts. Okay, let's take a look at the distortion now. Turn this off. There's clipping. Tune that out. So we're getting this large second harmonic. This is the 4.5 kilohertz 1% pilot signal that's built into the original wave file. But you can see here the large harmonic and I can't really tune that out. That's clipping. Like I say, there's always an issue using these breadboards to test amplifiers. Having the signal grounds isolated from the power grounds as much as possible is not really ideal in this situation. So you might get some distortion from that. So I think that's what the issue is here. It's not the amplifier itself. So okay, I will take some more measurements and jot it down and we'll move over to the other IC. Okay, I have the TDA7268 stereo chip amp hooked up. Because of the way it's configured with all the ground pins on one side, I have to run a bunch of jumpers over and bring the input capacitors over here out of the way. There's just no room because all the other pins are kind of clustered on this side. It has a neat feature where it has a separate signal ground pin. You do have to bond that with the power ground, but you can return your input signal to the signal ground pin. And that might result in lower distortion. We'll have to see how it plays out. But I have the speakers hooked up. Let's give it a listening test. Sounds good to my ears. This chip does run at lower gain than the other one, and I'll put those figures uh, with the results at the end of the video. So it does have less hiss when the amp is sitting quiet. Also has a higher minimum operating voltage, so I'll take a look at that when I'm running the test here. So I'll hook up the 4 ohm loads and get some power measurements. Okay, the 4 ohm loads are connected. Again, we're at 9 volts. Uh, we have 2.28 volts. So we'll get the calculometer going here. 2.28 squared divided by 4. 1.3. So we are doing a little better than the other IC. And here is the distortion, of course the fundamental 1% pilot signal. Very clean, maybe a little blip here, here at a couple harmonic positions, but much cleaner. And I think that's due to having all the pins on one side and the separate signal ground allows me to hook it up better on this socket board where with this chip I couldn't do that as easy. So this chip actually on a good layout, it should perform about as equal, I would think. Okay, so I'll continue testing with the 4 and 8 ohm loads and come back with the results. And the results are in. Here is the supply voltage setting column. 2824 at 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 7268 at 4 ohms, and at 8 ohms. And as usual, the newer IC performed 
better in output power than the uh, older part. If I didn't mention before, the 7268 came out a little later. It came out, I think, in the late 90s, where this one, like I said before, came out in the late 80s. Ignore this stuff over here. This is the RMS voltage measurements I used to calculate these figures in the spreadsheet. And here is the output graph. Supply voltage versus the output power. The, dark, the darker lines are 4 ohm loads. Lighter lines are the 8 ohm loads. 2824 started at a lower supply voltage, so these you can follow those curves. Notice with the 7268, which I had to start the measurements at a higher supply voltage, at 5 volts, it put out less power than the other IC, but as I increased the supply voltage, it quickly jumped ahead. I just think that the 7268 is optimized for higher supply voltage, where the other IC can run at lower supply voltages. And for my closing remarks for this video, the TDA2824 has a gain of 39 dB, which is great for headphone music players that tend to have a lower output voltage than standard line level. Quiescent current was less than 10 milliamps, and that is great for battery use. It also has a 2 volt minimum operating voltage. That's very low. So if you have a a um, situation where you need to operate it at very low voltage, you can, although the output power is not going to be very good at such a low voltage. The TDA 7268 has a lower gain of 32 decibels, but that's still reasonable. You can still use it with headphone music players. Quiescent current draw is somewhat higher, well, quite a bit higher, really, 40 milliamps. And that's still okay for battery power, but not nearly as good as the 2824. The data sheet says its minimum operating voltage is 4.5 volts. I would say it's probably more like 5 volts. And at 5 volts, it's performing worse than this IC in output power. It's really optimized for 6 volts and higher. But you know, if you wanted, you could run it at 5 volts, though I wouldn't recommend it. The bad news is these ICs are both obsolete, but you should be able to find the TDA 7268 pretty easily on eBay. Not sure if they're authentic or counterfeit. Usually they counterfeit more expensive, higher power devices because the die size will be larger. You might try some, they might come out to be authentic, I don't know. Some of the ICs I bought off of eBay I got from Delbani, who recovers them from electronic products. I imagine it's products that went in production, but you know they canceled the uh, product. So a company like Delbani goes in and recovers parts that might be worth some value. And they turned out all good, but they are a little bit more expensive. Well quite a bit more expensive in some cases. But if you want a good small stereo IC of you know, around one watt or so, highly recommend this one. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Are you getting hungry? Huh? Huh? <laughs> He's gonna roll. Are you getting hungry? Yeah. Yeah.